All right, today I'm going to be assembling the Harbor Freight two-ton engine hoist, item number 69514. I've never put anything like this of Harbor Freights together before. Um, not sure how difficult it's going to be. I know that I got to put it together loosely so that way any uh, any sort of kinks or anything that's binding up, I'll make sure I tighten everything down at the end. So I'm going to take you guys through a time lapse of me assembling this, and there should be another video that I link at the end of this of where I'm actually using this. In a few weeks, I'm going to be taking apart a 1992 Jeep Cherokee from taking the engines, the axles off, seats out, everything completely, tearing it down and, and chopping it up into little blocks and, and bringing it over to the scrapyard and keeping the parts that I want to keep for my 99 Jeep Cherokee. So, should be exciting. I've really been looking forward to putting this together for weeks. I haven't had the chance to do it, so here I am in, in Michael's garage. Hopefully going to be able to get this together in less than an hour and then I should be able to use it as much as I want and Mike will be able to use it to lift up his sleds if he ever has to use his, uh, ever has to do work on his tracks. So it should be great. All right guys, these are the two packages that I got from Harbor Freight. They, uh, not sure what's in each one of them. This one is super, super heavy. This one is pretty light. I haven't even opened them yet. I don't even know what's inside of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and open these up now. I don't know the quality of this. I hope it's gonna be good and we'll be able to see how everything locks together. First box, looks like we got one piece of framing. Very heavy on its own. Let's see the weld quality on this. Seems like they stick welded it. I mean, it don't look great, but it don't look bad. It'll definitely hold. There's no welding on the inside of this seam right here. The only welds I see are around this piece here. There's no welding on the inside here. I'd like to see welding in there, but you know, I don't know what the strengths are in this. You know, they probably tested it all, but still I'd like to see welding in there. This beam going across, weld looks dirty, but it looks all right. It goes all the way around. Weld down here, same thing goes all the way around. Not happy with how they welded that just on, uh, essentially they didn't do it on all four sides. I don't know how I feel about that. Here are some casters, some uh, casted wheels, some just bearing, just open bearing, nothing fancy. I don't know, you know what the pound rating is on this or anything. I don't know how hard they're gonna be bound up. Here's two smaller ones. I see in the image here, it looks like there's gonna be six wheels. Looks like these smaller wheels go in the middle. That piece right there looks like it's part of the base that I just had out before. These are the bars you use to, uh, this is a foldable crane, so this looks like the bars you use to probably put in the holes in the side. I'm not sure, we'll have to see. Here's the standard, you know, everyone's doing the Ikea thing all the bolts inside of the uh, the plastic and cardboard box. So that's like. And now the big heavy one, this has everything else in it. So right away, here's the arm. The chain already on it. See this is the two-ton one. Just so you guys know, it does not fit two tons if you have it fully extended. You see how it's done? So two tons would be this setting, one and a half tons, one ton, and then half a ton. So when you're pulling an engine out of a vehicle, the less, the further in you can be with this, the more pulling power you have with this. And so how this thing seems, I'm not sure what this top part is right here. This looks like it's just a brace just to stop this from bending, you know, you got two tons on this thing, you don't want this from bending, you don't want it bending. I mean, I don't know how strong this has to be welded again, it looks like it was stick welded. Again, looks like they only welded one side, and then on the back side they have just a little, little weld and a little weld there. So this is really only welded on one side. Not very good, but... For the price, this is, you know, a third of the price you can get anywhere else, so that's where they're going to slack, you know? This is welded all the way around. I have uh, one of the come-alongs at Harbor Freight Cells, and this this is the exact same uh, type of feeling to the to the metal. I'm, you know, I'm no metallurgist, I don't know what this is made out of, but 
it seems like, you know, it can still hold up to it, it's just a chain. Looks like here's the handle for the actual jack, the hydraulic jack that's in there. Here's the hydraulic jack, eight ton long ram. This thing is big and it is not light. This appears to be, based on the picture, there's a handle in the back. So this is probably the handle in the back when you're moving it around. Barely welded on, just a little bit. A little bit here, a little bit here. It's just a handle, you're not gonna be having a lot in there, so I guess you don't need to weld it that much. Save a little bit of money on that when you're putting it together. So this seems to be the actual arm. So this would be down like this. The other arm comes off. The first arm I showed comes off here. So the, the ram is going to go from this point to somewhere around here. This is what's going to cause it to move up and down. This seems to be welded together a lot better than the other one. All the way around, it's welded all the way around in this as well. Welded all the way around here. Again, everything looks to be stick welded. Nothing fancy. It's a big punch, big chunk of steel. So I guess those fifth and sixth wheels are already attached. I'm not sure what caused them to bolt these in ahead of time, maybe because the bolts go through on the inside here. But these, no welding on this, just tube stock. Nothing fancy here. This is one of the legs. And then the other leg is right here. Same exact thing. You know, they put these bolts in here. Same wheels, or smaller wheels. Uh, no washers on the inside, just lock washers. And uh, nuts. These appear to be parts of the support for the back of this. There's a couple bends in it. I'm not sure how this is gonna work. Looks like it goes from the bottom of the frame up to where that handle goes. So from here I'm gonna go and I'm actually gonna read the instructions. See what has to be done and start getting to it. All right, so the first thing I'm going to put on here is the smaller middle wheels. They're only used when the lift is folded up. These just thread right into the, the square stock. And these back wheels here, very hard to get in. I had to get my hands on the inside of, of these tubes in order to get the, uh, the lock washers and, and nuts on it. It was very difficult. And when I'm putting these legs on here they're only held in by uh, four pins and I still believe they could have welded uh, that inner seam that I mentioned before and I think it still would have cleared it now when you go ahead and assemble the top part of this you want to make sure that you put everything on loose so that way you can still adjust everything because there was a little bit of you know it was a little tight it didn't go down all the way in some spots you want to make sure everything's loose when you put it together now here I'm actually gonna make a mistake I have to take this top part apart right here. I forgot to put the handle on. The handle goes on right over the uh, the square stock there, and then those little arms go over it. And now with the hydraulic ram, when you're storing this thing, keep the keep the head of this down so that way the uh, the the chrome part of the the ram there is is covered in oil. I'm not sure how how well they manufactured this ram. It could rust out. All right. So after putting it together, some final thoughts on this. You know, the hardest part was actually putting the wheels on this. I understand why they had these wheels in the end put on. You gotta stick your hands inside of these tubes in order to get these things in and all the way in. And I had a heck of time getting my hands inside of these tubes with these back wheels on. It was pretty hard. That was probably the hardest thing about this whole thing. The only thing I'm concerned about is the fitment. With this beam right here, this thing that's supporting all of this, doesn't go down all the way back here. I have everything done right, but it doesn't sit on it all the way. I got everything as tight as I could. Uh, not too tight because some stuff does have some slop, like this, this hydraulic ram in here, it has some side to side play. You know, if I were to go out to the hardware store, I would definitely get some washers and put them in here in order to keep this thing nice and center. I don't want any, any weakness on this thing. You know, people already make fun of Harbor Freight for their tools. I love it because for the price, you can't go wrong with this kind of stuff. You know, like I said before, I spent $160, $180. I don't know. I don't remember how much I spent. But easy. You'd be spending double that easy on a, on a two-ton uh, lift anywhere else. And 
and for when you need it, you know, you're not going to be using this thing every single day. This is great. You know, it folds up. I'm going to be able to put this thing in the corner of Mike's garage, no problem. Other thing I really didn't like was these directions were not very specific with which bolts go where. I had to essentially go based on the picture that was inside the instructions and line them up and try to guess which ones were which. I didn't have a ruler with me in order to measure the length of the bolts. I'm sure if you guys do, you're going to have a great time with this. I did have to resort to using some wrenches. I didn't have any sockets that were big enough. You know, I had to use 14, 22, 24. So make sure you have a wider range of, uh, of sockets if you're going to be using this. I don't feel the need of you needing an impact on this. You don't need to go crazy torquing everything down in this thing. You know, a little loose is okay, but like I said before, go to the hardware store, get some, get some washers, throw some extra washers on here. But it does work. I did check this. I, I kind of got sick of you know, doing this by hand, but it totally works. You know, and it goes up and it does its thing. Seems pretty good, you know. The, the ram does work. I was nervous that the ram was not going to work. But it does. It seems pretty level. Only thing that's a little bit of a pain is when you go to lift these legs up in order to lock them into the upright position, you kind of have to lift up on the middle here because these wheels down here at the bottom are not on the ground. Uh, so you kind of have to lift up on it in order to get the uh, lever to pull the pin out in the front. Uh, not a big deal. And, and again, you saw I did this by myself. I put it together by myself. So don't be afraid to buy one of these thinking you need to have your buddy here with you or anything. You could totally put this together all by yourself. No problem. I'm not even sure how long this took me. I, I would guess probably an hour, maybe under an hour. I haven't even checked. But it's all done. It looks good. You know, am I 100% satisfied? I'm not sure. We'll see what it, how it works when I got an engine on the other end of it. So, very minimal mess. Only a few few parts in this thing. At the end of this video, I'll link off to where I'm going to be working on my Jeep, and I'll uh, put whatever the time is in that video, and which video it will be, where I'm actually using this, so that way you guys can see how it works. Till then, see ya.